It is good to be back live this week. Last week was throwback week. All we did was do some of the best shows that we have out there. And I have a feeling today's show is going to be one of the best. So when we do throwback down the road, we'll have a good one. I'm thrilled to have my friend, fellow entrepreneur, a uh, connector, great dude who loves music just like I do. I'm so pleased to welcome Stephen Heller. Tell me something good. <laughs> hey, it's, listen, it's great to be here. Thanks so much. And uh, I, I watched a few of the uh, Tell Me Something Good videos. And of course, I love you on the daily huddles. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I was so excited to be doing uh, today's um podcast with you to tell you something good because you and I were together at the very beginning when this was yeah, still just a, a concept. We didn't even have a logo or a brand yet. Um, I remember whiteboarding uh, in, in your office uh, a, a bunch of different ideas. And that was... And you know what a cool takeaway is from that, and I've used this story before, is that we had known each other prior to you wanting to do that. You were an attorney yeah. and I don't know, we got introduced, we knew some of the same people and you have a very, what I'll call affable uh, personality. You're always smiling, you're always fun to be around. You're not a negative dude. So I kind of remembered you, but we hadn't spoken in a while. And one of the first people that connected with me on LinkedIn was you. <laughs> and it was like, hey, this was like in the middle, towards the end of a December. And you said, we should get together in January. I got a new idea that we're going to bake. And that's what we baked. And so why don't you tell people who you are? You know, your, your, of- your timing and your memory of the season is, is spot on. Because I actually formed the, the company as a legal entity uh, in November. And this is, you know, now the end of November. LinkedIn just popped up that it was our nine-year anniversary as a company. So oh your, your, your memory is, is spot on that it was November, December, where we were starting all of that brainstorming. And then January, we were building the website and, and uh, off and running. So why don't you tell people who you are, like a little bit of your story and how you came to own a company, which I love the, the name Brand Liaison, and what you do and how, because I know the stories that you have people it's going to resonate with people because you take things in culture push them up whether it's a product um and or a name that should be put together that nobody else knows how to do so and it's, and it's funny because i can't walk through a store like i'm in home depot and i'm looking <laughs> you know i can't walk through any store and not be looking at packaging and products and 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 branding because of it but the company is the the brand liaison And we are a licensing agency. So what do we do in licensing? We match brands with products and products with brands. And the reason I say it that way is because half the time we're on the brand side, where we represent some famous brands like Gloria Vanderbilt and Laura Ashley and uh, FUBU. So, you know, Damon John from Shark Tank is a good friend. Um, uh, Bum Equipment. So... Half the time we're on the brand side and a bunch of celebrities, Robert Irvine on, on QVC and David, uh, we have on QVC, David Tutera. Um, so uh, half the time we're on the brand side and we look for products to put those brand names on. And the other half the time we're on the product side where we work with manufacturers of everything from apparel to backpacks and accessories to toys and home goods and stationery and uh, any product that is looking for an established brand name for a different collection, maybe at a different channel of retail or something to, to uh, differentiate the, the products. And, and so, I, so I love this conversation um, because when people hear some of the examples that you have, there's aha moments. There's like, I, but, you know, that, yeah, that one should go to, together and, you know, like uh, Bailey's, you know, has an ice cream. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. So, and then occasionally there's those that don't make sense. <laughs> so, so and sometimes you- <laughs> the ones that are completely out of the box, like I went to a, to a seminar last year and it was the U.S. Post Office or maybe FedEx doing apparel at Forever 21. And it said special delivery and, and the, the design of the product stood out. But where would you ever think that people would be wearing U.S. post office 
patterns and designs on on apparel. And it was probably wildly successful. Wildly so, successful. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. So give us a couple of examples, if you would, of things that either you worked on or what gave you the inclination to get into the space in the first. So actually, the very first, and, and for people who don't know what licensing is, uh, licensing is, is where some owner of some intellectual property, a brand name, an invention, you created a new product or something, and you grant rights in that intellectual property in return usually for a royalty or something like that. So the best example I always give, and it's actually the first deal we worked on a brand liaison was through you and uh, our mutual friend, Ken Waldman. Oh my and, God, that's right. And we, we got him, uh, oh we went God. for the NFL and the collegiate for those home storage boxes and, and bins. Wow, that is um, so but, true. I forgot all about that. That's but great. A, perf a perfect example is the NFL. And, and the, we're all Dolphin fans or Giants, whatever. And so with the NFL, they don't make or sell any product, even the apparel and the T-shirts. Somebody is paying a royalty and has the license. So over the years, we've done a lot of sports licensing with NFL and NBA and collegiate deals. Um, in fact, we got a client the rights for the NFL for T-shirts, sweatshirts, bags, and backpacks for China through NFL no International. Kidding. Yeah. No. Um, so uh, sports licensing is something we've done you know, from the very first deal that we worked on with you. And that was part of the impetus to creating the brand liaison was a vehicle to put those kinds of deals together. And then I think, you know, after that, we talked about Loudmouth and Roland Garros. I know you're a big tennis fan. Oh, oh my so. God. Wow. These, uh, well, you're, you are bringing me back to stuff I hadn't really been. Loudmouth was like, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's still around to some degree. Am I right? It, it Isn't is that? actually, and I'm still in touch with them. Um, and uh, and LJ is still with Loudmouth, and Woody's still doing the artwork. And um, we had a, a very successful licensing run for, for many years. And uh, um, the company's still around. And obviously, with the resurgence of golf right now, um, post pandemic, um, I, I think they're paused for another exciting run. So, if I asked you what your top deal was, or the top three deals, could you like your favorites? <laughs> What are Stephen Heller's favorite licensing deals? Um, the top ones are easy. So like you go with the old standby, you know, biggest opportunities, you know, Gloria Vanderbilt, we have major programs at Costco. So that kind of volume uh, just dwarfs many other things that, that we're doing. So um, her brand name, her brand name could be put on something that you put at Costco and that deems it to be different because I know the Costco buying universe is, well, the, yeah, is and the Costco customer. The Costco customer knows the brand. The, the our client, the owner of the Gloria Vanderbilt brand, makes the jeans, but they don't make the sleepwear or the underwear or socks or footwear yeah. and handbags. So we've licensed out the brand name for all these other categories. And our licensees then sell, they some sell coal, some sell, you know, TJ and off price. Um, and, uh, but Costco is a major part of the Gloria Vanderbilt programs uh, that we do. So it's fun when you walk through the store and you see one of your, one of your properties there. So walk me through the life of brand liaison. So you acquire the client, which is um, Gloria Vanderbilt. Yeah. And then you go, your work is to go see what matches there are with that brand name, what, what you can put it on. Then who takes it to retail? Who, who does that so work? We, so we're, if we're doing our job properly, and exactly what you said. So when we're on the brand side and we knew the, the owners of Gloria Vanderbilt that had been spun out from a bigger apparel company at the time we were speaking with them, so we met with them. We did a deep dive into the brand, the brand DNA. Um, we did a deep dive into the brand DNA and, and the history of the brand, uh, where the brand lives at retail. And uh, we then go out and bring on the partners that match that brand DNA and the goals for the brand. 
Now, if we're doing our job properly, we're going to the partners that already have strong relationships at many of the major retailers. Got it. So to find the right partner, you want the company that already has the relationships at the places you want to be. But if yeah, it's a sports that, that brand, could be, that could be an uphill battle getting an audience, you know, to, who wants to see that. Yeah. And so they need the relationships there or sometimes having the right brand can help open that door. Um, you it. know, if you're calling on uh, TJ Maxx or Burlington or, or we're working on a deal now with um, uh, Echelon, the home fitness brand, it already has a very strong foothold at QVC, at Dick Sporting Goods, uh, Walmart. So other people that are looking to do, whether it's apparel or fitness accessories, would license that brand, and that may be entree into some of those retailers where the brand is already strong. Got it. Got it. I, I love it. So here we are. It's um, you know nine or ten months into this pandemic. Um, March thirteenth, the world changed for everybody. I want to get your perspective on how did you deal with it. Number one, and number two is what business takeaways can you share with the audience about you know because you know, retail, some is good, some is not good. It's affected product flow, manufacturing. So I think there's a whole bunch of questions that people would have, you know, that, you know, tell me something good about the pandemic. You know, it's really interesting too. And, and first of all, we, as a company, worked remotely prior to the pandemic. So us working from home and a dog barking or the phone ringing in the background of a Zoom call, you know, we used to have to like, like try to hide it or right? get embarrassed if the, the dog barked. And now you get on a Zoom call and if a dog barks or a baby cries, you just have to pick up the dog and, 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 and share it. And, and it actually gives the other person a little more insight into who we are as people because we have family. We have, you know, little kids and babies sometimes running around during a call and um, it, it, it makes it even more personal. But right when COVID hit, um, because licensing is controlled by licensing agreements and their contracts and there's commitments from both sides, um, I did a, a one hour uh, webinar for C-level executives and legal counsel on solutions and really creative solutions to amending license agreements in light of COVID. It has been the single most watched webinar or seminar in licensing international's history because wow. I didn't take a side, I didn't have an opinion, I didn't charge, I didn't make any money, and we didn't charge. It was just me sharing a lot of potential solutions. And the theme I said is if licensing is a partnership, now is when you need to be a real partner, both sides. And we shouldn't be looking at force majeure clause or going into litigation. Like, what are some win-win business solutions that both sides can kind of roll up their sleeves, work together, and, and help each other and find winning solutions? So, so, um, so I, want to, I want to focus on you know, some of that comment because you, that was packed with nuggets. Number one is you had knowledge that you could share. That's what social media really is about. You created a stage based on content that you were willing to share. That has a positive influence on how people view you and all of the other things, you know, that, that you know, the, the, it's a different world now, you know. And so, you know, I think when people got stuck, they are afraid to get the bad advice because there's some agenda. You did it agenda free. Hey. <laughs> Agenda free. And, and I wasn't on the licensor side or the licensee side. Right. Um, it was really trying to help everybody just think slightly different. You know, instead of coming at it from an adversarial or looking at the, the literal words of the agreement and ending up in a court, which I said, if you're in court, you're both losers. Like you're, right. it, it's a losing, it's a long term emotional drain. I said, let's find creative solutions that are win win business solutions, not legal solutions. But it was, yeah, sharing my knowledge. Um, in fact, that one's up on my website, but I have another video on my website that we recorded at the licensing show, how to negotiate a licensing deal. And I spoke to an audience about 150 people at the licensing show. We gave out a worksheet. And that's loaded with, I love your word, nuggets. <laughs> 
Um, that lecture is loaded with nuggets. And, and a friend of mine came up to me after the lecture and goes, Steve, you're giving away your best secret. You're giving away all of this stuff for free. You shouldn't do these, these lectures. But, you know, I, I don't always have my hand out. It, it comes back in other ways. Um, and I think like you just said, sharing knowledge um, and, and, and giving of, of yourself has is, is been one of my keys. Tell you something good. That's been, I think, one of my keys to, to why the company has been so successful. I'm really glad that we got there because, you know, obviously I'm trying to provide value to my audience through the people I know and that I've worked with and that I admire and respect. And the hardest thing for me as a sales guy, when I first jumped into social media was, okay, I got the advice that, you know, you got to share it. And I was like, what are you talking about? It took me 40 years to develop all this stuff. I mean, you just give it away. Like, you know, and what, what tended to happen was that accelerated more people wanting to listen to me. And they go, wow, man, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I did a video at the very beginning of March when everybody was still confused about what was coming. Every single day, I still get likes on that same video. So to your point, and all I did was say to people, hey, listen, if you're asking yourself, should I be prospecting? The answer is hell yes. yes. People need to connect and do. And you know, so I've taken the word prospecting and flipped it around and saying, I'm just creating opportunity to be friends or to hear what's going on in your life. Or you know, even if I can answer a question for you, that's real value before the sale. So I'm so glad that you went there. And, and by post- the way, that's, that's, I think, as an observer watching your career, one of your oh, yeah. great keys to success is you've, you've built that rapport. You've even, you know, relationships. And like you said, we knew each other. Then we connected, you know, when I started this company. And then, you know, we didn't talk for a few years in between. And we catch up again and, and bring back memories. But there's always that rapport and that relationship that, hey, I need somebody who, who, you know, to do a training or the ultimate connector. I say to somebody, you gotta call Steve Nudelberg. There, there is no better person to call. Um, you know, and, and to such a degree, first of all, I'm always flattered, thank you. But, you know, it's part of my DNA, it's part of how I operate. But it's so funny how, you know, we do the daily huddle. We too don't charge, don't do anything for it. But the, one of the big keys to it is music. And I write about it that in my book, you know, I forgot that you were such a music fan. You reach out, boom, we reconnect. We're talking music. You're making suggestions. You're having a good time. Then the next thing, and I'm going to make you blush a little bit. I get a package in the mail just before the holidays. And it's a big tube. And I'm like, what the hell? And I open it up and it is a gigantic poster of a, basically a music library, which was, I'm going to have framed and put up. But the fact that, you know, that there's a point there that you and I connected on music will always be connected. Always. And I will tell you that re-engaging with me, you got my wheels spinning about the people I can introduce you to. And so, you know, the takeaway for people is if you had reached out and said, hey, Steve, who do you know that you can introduce me to? Wah, wah, wah. But you reached out, music, great, boom, boom, boom. You rekindled why we connected in the first place. And now I'm doing the homework of saying, hey, listen, work from home is a good one for you. And Midas might be another one. You know, and all of a sudden, you just get crazy. And it's it's all about relationships and and credibility. And and I know if I send somebody to you, they're getting the best at what you do. And and because we have that rapport, you're only going to recommend me, not because we like music together, but you see the success and and you know that we're going to do good things for the people that you, you know, send our way. So what well what said, relationship, so having what said relationships that, are about. I'm really, I'm really glad you said that. So in our last minute or so, because I try and do these in bursts of energy, um, who should be reaching out to you? Like uh, someone's at home listening to this or they're in their office and they have an idea or they have a brand, like who should be reaching out to you and how do they find you? Um, so www.the brand liaison and liaison is spelled funny l-i-a-i-s-o-n dot com google the brand liaison at the contact us there's a an email box or just steven s-t-e-v-e-n at the brand liaison i have a personal um policy of responding to everyone 
Um, and by the way, I've had people come to me four or five years ago. We met at the such and such show, the licensing show four years ago. You told me this. And then this girl, because her website was, it, it, it didn't show who they were. And they came back. I met them at another show about three years later. She opened up her iPad. She goes, you told us this is what we needed to do. And she showed that they did it. Wow. Um, so that, that says a lot. So who, who should call? Um, if you're too early stage, hey, I just have an idea, that might be a little too early. Um, the, the video, How to Negotiate a Licensing Deal, talks about when a property is really ready for licensing. But either you have a great brand and you want other products, but you don't wanna make and sell those products. You wanna go with someone that has an expertise. So we represent a major toy company, Jazzwares, down here in South Florida. Sure. And they have the Fortnite license and Peppa Pig and, um, and great people at that company, by the way. But, you know, if you want to have a children's toy, but again, there needs to be a compelling reason that they're going to pay you to make the toys. But toys are very hard. It's not like you're screen printing a, a logo on a T-shirt. Um, so if you have a, a great property or a brand and you want to expand that brand, definitely reach out to us. If you have a great product and you want to add a brand name, um, a great example of this is uh, we had a client that did really tough backpacks and roll bags, really strong. And we said to him, let's go get the Mack truck, the Bulldog license. Really hits home the message of, of that strength and, and indestructibility. Um, so if you have a great product, or the last thing, and we do this a lot with, with Damon's properties that he, he buys from Shark Tank. Um, and if you watch the way he invests, very often he looks for licensable inventions. Um, but we represent the Comfy, the big oversized sweatshirt that was uh, Barbara Cochran's investment on Shark Tank. But if you've invented a product or you have a, some great IP and you don't necessarily have the capital or the relationships to build your own company, licensing is a, a real fast track to get right into market and you're partnering with someone who's established in the industry with the production, with the relationships. And, and you are the best. I thank you for spending time with us today. Pretty awesome. That was awesome. Uh, love spending time with you and always something good comes out of it with you. See you soon.